If you've been on social media lately, especially TikTok or X, you've probably seen people talking about 3i Atlas, a comet roughly the size of Manhattan that is zipping through our solar system at about 36 miles per second. The chatter alone is inspiring really interesting hypothetical questions about how we might govern interstellar objects. So here to shed light on the topic is the Atlantic Council Geotech Center non-resident senior fellow and space law expert, Rebecca Connolly, who's the chair of the board of Space Law Council of Australia and New Zealand. Thank you so much for having me, Emily. It's a pleasure to be here. Rebecca, I would love if you could start off by telling us simply what is 3i Atlas? What do we know about it right now? And why is it making headlines? So 3i Atlas is sparking so much interest and excitement around the world. It is an interstellar comet, um, which means it's actually originated outside our solar system and has traveled all the way through to our solar system to where we're able to spot and track it. It is only the third interstellar object that we have managed to track. So the, in terms of science and you know, being exciting with the discoveries, it gives us a really unique glimpse into the formation and evolution of planetary systems outside of our own. Now, who has legal rights or responsibilities to celestial objects? We have a fundamental principle with outer space of that it's the province of all humankind. And this means you can't actually own space or own a celestial body. There's been a small shift in that policy to allow for ownership of resources that you extract. But that, that's been a fairly fundamental principle for a long time. Now, what role does the commercial sector play in observing comets and similar objects? And how should the U.S. and its allies prepare for future interstellar visitors? They're actually driving some innovation. When we're looking at comets like 3i Atlas, it's really exciting that you know, our commercial sector is involved in that. They provide really unique services and help with sort of transparency and sharing of information and data. Can you explain the meaning of the phrase science diplomacy? So science diplomacy is this concept of sort of building bridges across countries, despite what may, might be sort of political rivalries. A great example is the International Space Station. So when we're looking at planetary defense and you know, monitoring our, our night skies, we need to bring in this concept of science diplomacy to ensure that we're all working together across nations to share that data and transparency and track um, all of those sort of you know, objects we see in the night sky. It's a really good reminder that while space might be a strategic domain, it's also a platform for sort of human endeavor and collaboration, and it's a responsibility of everybody. 